saw it written and I saw it say Bingo Moon I'm Jake I'm Tom. And we are VIMTV Velocities in Music, the best kept secret in music reviews. Guys, we're happy to celebrate with you our 500th album review. Can you Woo! believe it? Two and a half years, Velocities in Music, moving music critique forward, 500 album reviews. We'd like to do special things uh, for our, our centennial albums. Um, we've had a few centennial albums, and that list is Master of Puppets, uh, Philip Selway, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Slipknot, Slipknot, Iron Maiden, Iron Maiden. Some so good metal in there, big name actually. albums. Um, and and then uh, now today we're gonna do a throwback that both uh, just from Tom, Tom and I's collection, collective mm -hmm. collection, the collective collection. Um, an album that literally I think has had just a huge dynamic effect on you personally. And yeah. Music, and then me, just in my own, you know, life and interpretation of, of what music is, and that's Nick Drake's third album and his last before he he passed away, uh, Pink Moon. Um, this is an an album. First of all, first of all, I want to describe something about Velocities to Music. Five hundred album reviews. We want to dedicate this to you guys for watching us over the past five hundred album reviews, and also to promise you that this is just the beginning. Um, we are not in the business of of getting a ton of fans really fast. What we're here to do is build relationships with dedicated fans who want to talk about music and, and experience new music like we do. Um, so we're not in this to like build a business out of it or get rich quick or anything like that. We're in this just to, to, to live our passion. That's what we're mm -hmm. doing this for. Um, so what we've been doing over the past two and a half years is just really building a foundation of, of, of a music reviewing, a video music reviewing website. We're going to embark over the next two and a half years and on into the future on another 500 album reviews and hopefully a lot more new stuff. We have some really big ideas, including another studio upgrade with you know better lighting, better sound, all that. We want to do podcasts. We want to do some upgrades to our site, make the site more interactive. Mm -hmm. A lot of really big assets that we can add to Velocities in Music that bring you guys to be more of a part of it, so that the Velocities in Music community becomes stronger. We become one in music, and in you know just like the fourth have it mm -hmm. force have it just flow through us. Um, anyway. On to Pink Moon. 500th album review, we like Pink Moon. Why do we like Pink Moon? Well, I think it starts off with Nick Drake. Nick Drake is, um, you know, he was very underappreciated in, in his life. Definitely. Um, you know, he, he did three albums. He did um, first um, uh, Five Leaves Left, uh -huh. and then he did uh, Brighter Lighter, and then he did uh, or Brighter Later, um, and then Pink Moon. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then Pink Moon, and all in between like the late 60s and very early 70s. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and then, um, I think he committed suicide. Is that it? It's, it's debated. debated. It, it could have been suicide. Yeah. It could have been an accident. I don't know. But that happened in 1974. Mm -hmm. This album came out in 1972. He was actually in the middle of working on a fourth album yeah. uh, when he passed. And I know some of those demos have been released. Mm -hmm. um, but Pink Moon, to me, is Nick Drake's best album. I, I, and there's a lot of disagreement, mostly just because he had three albums that were all incredible right. and hugely influential. Um, and, and what's interesting is he never really got his due credit in his lifetime, and that's what made him such a depressed individual. Mm -hmm. What makes him such uh, an icon in music, to me at least, and in acoustic music and folk music, is that he had such a strong personality, but it was just absolutely like depressed and anxiety ridden uh the guy rarely did live performances he would never do like public speaking he would never do interviews because he was always just so nervous and disconnected um and it, it comes out in his music sadly and, and it's absolutely a shame that this is the way it is but some of those personalities, some of those tormented souls end up making the best music right and, and pink moon is the highlight of that coming out of brighter later if that's how you pronounce it. Right. Uh, <laughs> coming out of that album, which was very filled out, there was a lot of extra instrumentation, a lot of percussion, you know, some horns, strings, and things like that. Um, and and Nick Drake, well, well, a lot of critics actually say that's his best one. Right. Um, Nick Drake was displeased with it because... I he, was too. Yeah, I, I actually think it's his, it's my least favorite of Me his too. at least. I, but, it has some great stuff on yeah, it. Yeah, but, but he said, you know, I feel like all this stuff dis distracts from you know, the, the emotional strings, core of yeah. the songs. And so he just set out to make the most personal, honest album that he possibly could, and that's exactly what Pink Moon is. Mm -hmm. This is just 
Nick Drake singing and him playing guitar with one track, the first track, with some piano overdubs. That's it. Yep. That's all you he get. He recorded this in two different two-hour sessions. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's it's a short album. Yeah. It's like 33 minutes yeah, long, something like 34 that. minutes. And, and, and to record that in, in literally a conglomerated four hours, I mean, that's a crazy... Crazy. I mean, he must have just gotten first take on a lot of these songs. Yeah. Some of these songs are extremely s simple. I mean, even I can play them on guitar. That uh -huh. means they're really simple. Mm -hmm. And 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 then, but you know, Nick Drake, he just had such foresight in 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 his music. He was able, you know, played with time signatures, you know, moods. S singers singing about you know depressing issues mm -hmm. didn't really happen until Nirvana came along, you know, or it was few few and far between. So clearly ahead of his time. Uh -huh. Now I remember when I first got into this album, it was actually you that got me into this album. Well, thank um, you. Yeah, no, th thank you, thank me, jeez. Um, and, and at first I was kind of like, well, it just kind of sounds like another guy with an acoustic guitar, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and then I, listen I kept listening, I found out, I was like, this came out in 1972? Are you kidding me? Because to, to me, listening to this like four or five years ago, I was thinking... It sounds like every acoustic artist out right now is ripping him off. Yeah. And I know once I started playing acoustic guitar, if you've ever listened to my music, I definitely rip Nick Drake off. I totally do. I'm not ashamed to admit it. I love his guitar style. It's everything that I want my guitar style it's, to be. It sticks in your head. Yeah, it's it's so good. But but beyond that, I mean, you know, there's only really a few elements to talk about on this album. One is the guitar style, one is the vocal style. And and it's so it's so perfect because he just sounds he sounds so sad and so morose, and yet at the same time so confident in what he's doing. He knows that what he's doing is exactly what he needs to be doing. It's where his heart is, and you can just feel that. It's one of the most genuine and honest albums you'll ever listen to. But but the one thing that, that puts this above and beyond for me, that I'll just go ahead and spoil it right now. I'm going to give this a perfect 100. And if it was a year or two ago that we were reviewing this, I probably wouldn't have. I probably would have given it a lower 90s because to me, in, in my cynical self, I probably would have said something something along the lines of, you know, a, a 33, 34 minute album of just acoustic guitar and vocals can never be perfect. Um, I'm going to be bad cop on but this one. Th that's fine. Okay. You can. I'll be good cop. Um, but the reason that this is for me is because something that I've realized about it that transcends the notion of performance and songwriting and whether those aspects are good, which I think they are here, is that this album for me... I can listen to it any time of the day, in any mood I'm in, and it is perfect for anything. Anytime I want to listen to it, it just works. It doesn't matter. Uh, if, if I'm having a really bad, sad day, I can listen to this and it'll match me. It'll work with me and it'll work with my mood and it'll make me feel better. At the same time, if it's like the happiest day of my life, I can listen to this and I will be overjoyed. It will only enhance that. And so for an album to be able to do that, when it's just one man, a guitar, and his voice, there is just something magical about that. Yeah. Something that, as I said, transcends anything about songwriting or the usual crap that we talk about. It's just, just something about that that cannot be explained. And I honestly have never come across another album that is able to do that as nearly as well as Pink Moon. Very well put. And I think the only difference between... I, I mean, I agree with everything that you just said. And I think mm -hmm. the only difference is that I've loved this album for such a long time um, that I'm able... Like, it's the effect... I don't want to... This is going to sound terrible, and I don't mean <laughs> it this way. But the effect has kind of wore off on me over no, the that's, years. That's understandable. So I don't that's come cool. back to it as much. And so mm -hmm. I kind of... When an album... When I don't come back to it... When I don't crave listening to albums like right now I'm on a huge Lost in the Trees kick mm -hmm. and I'm craving that album all the time so that jacks the score up well the opposite is true when when albums I don't crave all the time and I don't uh -huh. crave this but Tom's right in the situation you can put it on at any point in time and it's it's brilliant mm -hmm. um, and it's just extremely well written and, and Nick Drake is was just clearly way ahead of its time and I, you know there's not a lot more for me to say about mm -hmm. it it's it's really just a solid album. If you haven't listened to this album and you like folk mu music or acoustic music in general, go do it. At first it might not seem like anything special, but listen to it over and over again. And think settings. Of, yeah, and think about the things that we've said yep. and see if you make that same connection. This is a very personal album for me, so yep. obviously there's a lot of bias. I'm not going to try to ignore that. I'm not going to try to say it's not there. Um, but I think that if there's any chance you can get out of this album what I do, you should seek it out. Absolutely. For sure. Definitely. This is a must-listen album. Mm -hmm. I'm going 93. I'm going 100. Yep. So really love this album. Upper yeah. 90s, great throwback um, to celebrate our 500th episode or album review with our fans um, and, and to dedicate 500 more to you guys because you guys are what makes 
us uh, it makes VI and TV run, and it means a lot to us that you guys watch and listen to, to the things that we have to say. Um, so thank you very much. Um, please leave us a comment. If you listen to Nick Drake and want to share your experiences with Nick Drake, we'd love to hear um, your thoughts at www.velocitiesofmusic.com or youtube.com slash velocitiesofmusic. Please follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook. That's where we get to do most of our talking with you guys. And you guys, like as I said, you're what makes VI and TV run, and we love it. So the more interaction we get, the better. I'm Jake. I'm Tom. And here's the 500 more, guys. We are BIMTV. Good night. Take a look, you may see me on the ground.